Unstoppable Story Show, where we talk to ordinary people with unstoppable stories. Hey, have you ever felt like you didn't have your own voice? Did you ever feel like your voice had been taken away from you and you wish you had somebody that could help you get your voice back? Well, stay tuned because we're going to talk to somebody who has experienced just what you may be going through right now. And she has made it her platform to be the voice for the voiceless. And she's going to help you harness your inner energy so that you can have some outward success. And that's coming up next on the Unstoppable Story Show. Unstoppable Stories. Now, here's your host, Life Accountability Coach, Terrence Lefkowitz. Hey, 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 it is an unstoppable day. It's your boy, Terrence, the unstoppable coach, Leftridge, with the Unstoppable Story Show, where we talk to ordinary people with unstoppable stories. We are thanking you so much for coming in. Come on in, swipe and share. Come on in, like and share. We thank you for spending your Tuesday with us. You could be anywhere else in the world, but you have decided to be here and we do not take that lightly. So come on in. We want you to share this information. We definitely want you to come in and get your favorite writing utensil, get your get your pad and get your favorite libation. For me, it's water this evening, whatever it is for you, that is fine with us. You are welcome into the place. And we already got a Nefolk Nathaniel from the motherland checking in with us. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Come on, share that information with people around the world. Yes, we love having people come in from around the world to listen and get information on the Unstoppable Story Show, because we're just talking to ordinary people, but they've got unstoppable stories that's going to help you get to the next level of your greatness. So thank you guys for joining us. We've got a great show for you. Uh, I can't wait to share this phenomenal guest with you that we have this evening that's going to help you, especially if you've been one of those people that felt like you, your voice has been shut or your voice has been silenced, or if you have been one of those people that hasn't been allowed to really step into your true nature and to walk in your true purpose. So we're gonna be bringing our special guest on this evening very soon, but I wanted to make sure that you guys know that the Mr. Unstoppable mm -hmm. is going to be really, really busy this week. Uh, I have the show tonight, but then we also have I'm doing double duty tomorrow night, you guys. So I want you to make sure that you stay, stick and stay with us. Tomorrow night, I am going to be a guest on the Trina Brown Speaks International Broadcast. Trina Brown Speaks. You can catch her tomorrow night on her Facebook Live as well as on the radio uh, that's going to be live streaming to Africa and the Caribbean. Thousands and thousands of people are going to be talking about unstoppability, the ability to not be stopped, especially as we are coming out on the other side of this crucial situation that we found us in in the year 2020. So we definitely want you to tune in tomorrow night. That's Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Mr. Unstoppable is going to be hanging out on the live broadcast of Trina Brown Speaks. But wait, <laughs> that's not it. You know, I'm going to be doing double duty tomorrow night. I'm going to be your double duty cutie on, on the online airwaves. You can join me tomorrow night at at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So the first show was 7 p.m. Eastern time. This show, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I'm going to be hanging out with the coaches, 
Cafe. Phenomenal, phenomenal show featuring three other life coaches from across the country, uh, Janelle Harris, Wanda D. Hollis, and Lotus Roche of Lotus Roche Ignites. We are going to help you solve your I issues and help you guide you and direct you so that you can move from being stuck into being unstoppable. You can learn how to ignite and take flight and wake up winning as you step into your new territory. So if you can't catch me on that, on the seven o'clock show, come back at eight o'clock, catch me on the Coaches Cafe over on the site for Lotus Ignites, Lotus Roche Ignites. I'm so proud of all of these people that are doing all the great things that are continuing to bring messages to you from across the world, it's bringing you quality programming so that you can continue to keep being unstoppable. So as we continue, as we move into tonight's show, I want to bring in our special guest. She hails all the way from Canada right now, and this woman is a powerhouse. And not only is she a powerhouse, but she's a sneaky ninja, because what she does is just so ninja. It's so smooth. It's, it's so without work. It's effortless. She she makes being a multimedia professional, an award-winning multimedia professional personality, she makes it look smooth as silk. She is none other than Annie Koshi, and she lives by the mission of giving voice to the voiceless through thought leadership, photography, media, and the arts. And she's got an unstoppable story because she wasn't always this award-winning media personality that you're gonna see come shining brightly across your, your screen in just a second. She had a defining moment in her life where she had to leave everything that she knew, everything that she held dear to her at the time so that she could find and walk in her own self-development. Many of us spend our lifetime living the life that somebody else had preordained for us or, or living the life by somebody else's terms, never finding our own self-value and our own self-worth. And because of that, the seed that was created inside of us individually just for us withers away over the sands of time. But today, we're going to give you some inspiration. We're going to give you some motivation so that you can learn to met, let that seed germinate inside of you despite all odds, despite all naysayers, despite the people that are want to hold you down and throw dirt over you. See, I want you to understand, after this show, you will recognize that some people tried to bury you, but they forgot you were a seed. And the one thing that we know about a seed is the seed does its best work in the dark. So if you are in the dark right now, hold on tight because we're going to give you some nuggets, some juice, some information that's going to allow your seed to germinate so that you can come out of the ground and turn into the beautiful flower and the beautiful fruit that you were created to be. So let's welcome to the stage none other than our guest for the evening, the lovely Miss Annie Koshi. Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. Annie, can you hear me? I think I can. Can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. Welcome to the Unstoppable Story Show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. No problem. The pleasure is all ours. I'm glad you were able to make time to be with us here on the Unstoppable Story Show. And what we always love to do I, you know, I've got three pages of bio here, but I know you can tell your story far better than I can. So why don't you take a couple of seconds and just introduce yourself to the Unstoppable Stories audience? Well, how do you bottle a problem like Maria, or in this case, a problem like Annie? It's hard to see, speak it in three seconds, but I have to say that I'm very, very honored and blessed to have the journey that I've had been. Um, I started with um, teaching. I think that was my first calling and first profession and I began my career as a teacher. But 
I think I was always a performer. I was always someone who wanted to be on stage and in front of the camera. And so eventually that's where I found myself is working um, in front of the camera. But then I realized that I also love working behind the camera. And so I moved into behind the camera and, and becoming a professional photographer. But there were so many different faucets of my personality that weren't being catered to at that point. And so whether it was I was painting or singing or dancing, um, the artist in me needed to come out. So when one uh, road stopped or one way of creating stopped, I just found another way to do it. And so now that's moved me into the platform where I'm doing a lot of my work on a digital platform. And so I've just transferred skills what i did well in a classroom as a kindergarten teacher was i was able to draw pictures and help share stories with my kids storytelling and drawing has moved into graphic realm where i'm creating graphic work for the uh, people for companies for the different media that i'm doing so i'm just saying that we all have these skills within us as little children we have them and and how we actually harness and how we bring that out is the journey of our life. And so I'm just very, very happy that right now, at this stage of my life, I'm living the life that I've really wanted. And that is so good to hear as we speak with Andy Koshi here on the Unstoppable Story Show. And we're going to get a little bit into uh, how Annie came to be the beautiful woman that you see before us right now. Your your bio is just beyond unconceivable all the things that you've done over the course of your life and all the things that you've been able to do since you have had that defining moment in your life but before we talk about that defining moment i want to just ask you the question and it's the question that i ask every guest on the unstoppable story show and it's this when you hear the word unstoppable annie what does that mean to you i actually see the word able uh, in um, stop able. And so it means that regardless of what's put in front of me, Terrence, I have this desire, this inner fire um, that uh, fuels in me the desire to first learn, acquire the knowledge, and then to do it and then to run with it. And so it's not just to be able to do it in a mediocre fashion, but it's to be able to do it to the excellence that I, you know, I strive for. And so it doesn't really matter for me what the job is. There is no job that I feel that is beneath me, whether it is that I'm invited to someone's house and they need help in the kitchen, I'll pull up my sleeves and, and go and do the dishes. Um, whether it means that a friend needs help uh, packing and moving, I will pull up the sleeves, put on the track pants, put a t-shirt on and go and help them move. It It's really about how your attitude towards different things. And so if you have the right attitude and you have a positive mental attitude, then everything you do becomes unstoppable. I love it. I love it. That attitude definitely makes a difference. That attitude de determines your altitude and it, and it determines the, the person that you're going to be, especially when you're going through trials and tribulations, which you have had your, your fair share of. I mean, we talk about you being an, an award-winning, multi-talented media personality. We talk about uh, the businesses that you run. We talk about the mastermind groups that you are a CEO of and the thriving businesses that you're building each and every day. But that wasn't always Annie. No. Annie had a defining moment where she had to make a choice that as we look at the month of May being the month of Mother's Day, Annie, you had to make a choice that no mother would ever want to have to make. And that That's leads to where, where your story has taken you. So if you don't mind, take us back to that defining moment and, and just share a little bit of what you had to go through in order to grow into the person that sits before us today. Thank you, Terrence. I think that um, for myself, I had several defining moments and uh, all of these moments have helped to create a faucet of my personality that has then helped to bridge it to the next level. And I think the first challenge for me was when I decided to, um, having been raised here in the West in Canada um, from early childhood, uh, making a decision to move back and live in India 
in a place where I didn't actually speak the language was the first challenge. And I faced that um, with my usual courage and not knowing what I was getting into, but with this attitude of I'm going to face it and, and deal with it. It wasn't easy at all. Uh, there were definite, definitely defining moments for me there. But I think had I not gone through that, I wouldn't have been able to go through the next 26 years of my life, um, which had its shares of ups, downs, happiness, sadness, and everything in between, and the birth of my two children. And so, um, you know, when you have children, you think that when you have the first one, by the time they get to a certain age, you know how to do, um, you've got the manual for the second one. Well, you turn to look at the second one and the second one is completely different than the first one. And whatever manual you've developed um, doesn't work. And so I had two children, two boys who were very, very different in their personalities. And um, I was not an experienced mom. I was a young mom and I was raising them um, as parents. My um, we tried the very best with our children and we raised them up. But in the course of that, I had what was a traditional marriage. It was an arranged marriage. And um, as well-intentioned as my parents had been at the time, um, I don't think that it was the thing that was the best for me. And I didn't have a voice and I didn't speak my voice. I told the line of every docile Indian girl, who wants to obey their parents. And I went along with their um, decision that I was going to have an arranged marriage. And so I got married very, very young. And um, I got married probably um, way too young because when I think about children at that age now, um, you haven't really experienced anything in life. So I didn't know anything about life. That decision actually um, had both plus points and minus points. I think the uh, plus points really would be that I have two beautiful children. The minus points was that I really didn't know who I was as a person. I was defined by what everyone else in my community, in my family, the expectations they had of me. And I was just expected to toe along those lines. Being Indian and coming from an Orthodox Christian background meant that I had to follow certain um, parameters in which uh, of community expectations that I didn't realize at the time were different from my voice. And the defining moment really came for me when after several decades of marriage, I decided that it wasn't working for me and I left that relationship. But leaving it was not easy. Because for me, the ideal of having a family was very, very important to me. And in my head, having um, a partner and us raising children was something that was a, a perfect sort of scenario in my head. What happens when the dream that you've painted, that you've had all of your life, that you've been surrounded with, with other examples in your life, turns out to be different than what happens in reality in your own wow. life. Yeah. Well, this is a situation that I found myself in, Terrence. And um, all of a sudden, I was in a situation where I was not at all happy. My inner voice was telling me that I had a greater calling to, but my external situation was compressing me into a box that I found myself um, not fitting into. And the more I was being compressed into that box, the more I lost sight of who I was as a person, M the more that voice inside of me, that character inside of me started to disappear. And it was one fine day that I decided that I couldn't do that any longer. And so I made the decision to leave that situation, leave that marriage. But that really was the most difficult decision for me because in doing that, not only did I leave a marriage, I lost a lot of different things. Um, for my family, it was a very difficult decision. And in fear of losing the children, my parents decided to support my ex-husband. And uh, in their support of him, um, I also became... Um, sort of ostracized by my community. I became ostracized from my children. Um, I had several moments in which I lost everything um, that I knew as being familiar. And this was very, very challenging. I think the fundamental difficulty here, Terence, is for anyone who has got family around them and those building blocks of your soul are taken away um, in a flash, it shakes the very foundation from which you are built on. And this was a defining moment for me. 
Um, it was to decide whether I was going to live my life because my voice was telling me that I needed to do certain things in my life and it wasn't happening, or whether I was going to just succumb to the pressure of conforming to a life that I was expected to live. And when I decided to listen to my voice, because this is how I viewed it, at that point in my life, I had lived more life than I had remaining to live. Let me say that again. At this point in my life, and at that point that I made the decision, I had lived more life than I had remaining yeah, to yeah. live. Yeah. And when I thought about it like that, it is not enough that we give birth as mothers. It is not enough that we are the wife or the husband of someone else, that we need to shackle ourselves to a life that isn't fulfilling us. I understand. We are I, here. I completely concur with that as we are speaking with Annie Koshi here on the Unstoppable Story Show. You said it so eloquently. Uh, you know, I'm from the south side of Chicago and we we pretty much say there there comes a point where you have to stop letting life live you. Yeah. And start yeah. living your life. And there's a, there comes a point where you have to stop just existing, waking up, going to work, coming home, doing the chores, going to bed, waking up, going to work, coming home, doing the chores. This circle, uh, the circle, this living an average lifestyle. And in your case, not even an average lifestyle, but a lifestyle that you didn't even have a choice in living. Uh, yeah, because we are raised, you know, um, coming from Kerala, I'm, I'm from the community of Kerala, which is in South India. And uh, typically, the women are very quiet. And typically, when you get married, uh, as we grow up as young girls, we are uh, obedient to our parents. And then upon marriage, we are obedient to our husbands. Yeah. And so um, it is very unusual to find a Kerala woman who will speak her mind and it be okay. And so for the community, I, I, I'm outspoken. I speak my mind. And now even more so uh, because I have no fear to speak my mind. But even when I was there, I would speak my mind. And so I had different terms that were used for me, um, I'm, whether I'm headstrong, whether I'm outspoken, um, whatever it is, uh, these negative connotation words were used so that they would be able to define the fact that I was not conforming to an expected way of being as a woman. And it's very funny that this state in Kerala is actually one of the most educated. It is the most educated state. It had 100% literacy for years, but it continued to have a state. It was a state in which I found myself surrounded by people who have a very, very traditional expectation of gender roles. And I grew up in a community in the West where I went to school and I was exposed to females and males and all of us sitting together and mingling and being exposed and being able to do whatever we wanted to. And so there I was in a situation in which I was expected to be a certain way. I had an expected demanded um, way of being and I didn't understand it. I didn't understand why I had to be a certain way. Um, but I was fine. I, I told that line. I don't think that was the biggest issue for me. I think the issue came for me when um, they, the more I started to speak my voice, the more I became a media personality, I started hosting shows, I became more on stage, the more visible I became on the outside, the more invisible I became on the inside at home. And that was a defining moment. The more I got recognized by the public for how well I speak, how well I'm able to carry myself on stage, how well I had stage presence or camera presence, the more criticized I became in the back, in my home life, yeah. in my family life, and uh, by people in the community who didn't understand what it was that I was doing. And in those early stages, Terrence, I was just trying to find my voice. I was trying in my limited way of becoming... Um, more branded in my approach to things. But social media was something new. Social media was not viewed upon as being a business platform. Social media was viewed upon as being a place where you just spent time and it was a time place to have fun, to socialize. Yes. I had already started 
from probably 2014 and 2015, moving my work and things onto a more business type platform where I was um, posting things related to my work on that platform. But it was being misunderstood around my family and those who were close to me as though I was self-promoting. And that's where judgment comes into play, right? When right. what you do is misunderstood by those you think are your tribe. Yeah. And what I realized very quickly is everyone who's in your circle is not necessarily your tribe. You know what? And that that is so that is such a poignant statement. And and you're in Canada where I'm in the United States. I'm in Florida, but I'm from Chicago. And we had a, we had a saying not only in Chicago, but in the African-American community. We said that everyone who's your kin ain't your kind. Yeah. And so the, every and a lot of it has to do may have to do with the cultural significance, the way you guys, the way your culture was raised, uh, and the way the opinions they had around women and where they were supposed to be, or quote unquote their place. But also, that is not just something that is mutually exclusive to your culture. I mean, Absolutely. women across the world have been. Um, relegated to a lower status on the totem pole, uh, regardless of the the culture that they came from and, and just regardless of the income base that they came from. So your yeah. story, while it is very unique to you and what you had to go through, I'm so glad that you also use it as a platform to talk to the millions of women that are still being uh, relegated to that lower status even today <coughs> in 2020. Absolutely. So. And Terrence, that's the reason why for me, it was so important to um, do a couple of things. Uh, first off, um, I was honored to be given an opportunity to make a film. And I was cast as the lead character in a film, a social awareness film called A Bloody Mess. And in this film, I play a traditional um, mother a middle-aged mother and uh, who has been raised by certain expectations and traditions and she's raising a daughter in a Western community who doesn't understand these expectations and traditions. And I had to fit myself into a role that I found myself not believing in um, because I don't follow those. Trends. So I'm the one who is much like that daughter and I related to the daughter more than I did to the mother. And so I had to really, really delve far into stereotypical behavior, um, but not just stereotypical. We look at it as stereotypical, but real, real behavior. Because I remember as a child in the movie, A Bloody Mess is about menstruation. And this is a topic that most people in most communities have a difficulty talking to their men folk about. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, you have to be Indian. I uh, spoke about this to a group of 14, 15 year olds in high school here when I did a, a workshop with them. And the minute I mentioned periods, they were giggling and they found it uncomfortable. And yet, if you cut your hand and bleed, you will put a Band-Aid on it. But when women bleed every month, you find it cringeworthy. I don't yeah. understand. Um, if you have a fever or you're ill and you say, I'm not feeling well, that's fine. But when a woman says that she's not feeling well because she has her periods, she's expected to continue working and doing everything else that she would do when she's feeling all right. And so this film is a, a, a place where the discussions can take place about the stigma associated with periods. I don't think for... Um, a single time in my entire life, I have spoken to any of the male members in my family or in my extended family about getting me a tampon or getting me a pad or that I'm on my period. Um, it, it's not a topic that you would talk about. And it's funny that it's not just our relatives that have this issue. Our, my director uh, was at a party and uh, someone came up to her and said, wow, Aziz, you're starting a new film. What's the topic on? And she said, it's on menstruation. And that gentleman was found it so uncomfortable, Terrence. He had to say, oh, one minute, I'll be back and walked away from her. And yeah. it's funny yeah. 
that as topic <laughs> that is today in 2020 that we still have issues with this topic. And so the film has actually gone on and uh, is making huge impact across the world. It's about 11 and a half minutes. I actually haven't seen myself on screen, but I've heard that um, it, it's it's good. Obviously, yeah. um, it's making impact. It's been screened in Australia, in Ireland, in um, all over the U.S. Um, it's uh, won the Canadian Cinematography Award. It's won a Remy wow. in Houston. It's been slated as one of two films from all across Canada that's being screened at the International Film Festival in New York. And uh, and so with 13, 14 different nominations and recognitions already, this film is making huge, huge impact. That led me, Terrence, to my second film. The second film is a biopic on my life. And what you said just earlier before I started speaking about a bloody mess is the fact that my life is just a example of countless women and not just women. I think men are also in the same boat. And I think young people are also in the same boat where they're not able to live the life that they really want because they are finding themselves conforming or confined to expectations, whether it be societal or whether it be family or whether it be in their own mind about where and who they are and how they should live their life. And so my second film, the biopic of my life, is about fear. And fear doesn't represent um, what we would normally consider fear to be, but rather fear says, face everything and rise. And so the challenges that you go through in life are really just stepping stones for your success. And so that film really is a message for everyone across the world. It's a global impact film. And when did you start working on that film? That was shot in uh, November and December. It's uh, in post-production right now. Um, the trailer was re released on Mother's, uh, not Mother's Day, on Women's Day. Okay. And uh, it was slated for release in the spring, but then COVID-19 happened and uh, we've all gone yeah. into social isolation. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. Um, we are in the process of um, just getting the music and whatnot. It is in post-production. And so hopefully um, early uh, in the summer or in the early fall, we're expecting it to um, be released officially, depending on just how our uh, situations in terms of uh, being able to go out and see it and stuff will happen. So that's just dependent on that. Oh, and I'm sure it's going to happen right when it's supposed to happen in divine order. Uh, as we're hanging out with Annie Koshy here on the Unstoppable Story Show, we're talking about her unstoppable story of the of the life and her defining moments and how she is turning that into her platform to be a voice for the voiceless. And as you see across the screen, to help people to get a new terminology for the word fear, <clears throat> known as face every day and rise and, you know normally we work with the old connotation the old connotation for fear was um forget everything and run forget everything see that's like i just did <laughs> forget everything and run and and to have that negative turned into a positive i think it's very powerful for people especially today because we are we are a lot of us I have succumbed to fear, especially with this new pandemic that has raced across the country, across the globe at a record pace and unfortunately has taken many millions of lives in its wake, uh, physically yeah. from the earth. But it has also taken many more lives mentally. Absolutely. As, as, as a result of that, a lot of us are are living in that internal fear of what's hap what's going to happen next. And that fear has stopped us dead in our tracks from being the people that we were created to live. So wh what would you say to those people who have lost their voice in today's world as a result of what's happening with COVID-19? Well, you know what, Terrence? You have to look at COVID-19 as just another roadblock in our existence, right? So you have two options in life. Life happens. And none of us were expecting COVID-19. But then none of us ever expect a calamity to happen. And you're never really prepared for it emotionally, mentally. We were definitely not expecting this to happen on a worldwide level. What happens to you when you are faced with a challenge? 
what differentiates some people from being able to face a challenge and come out of it and face a challenge and succumb to it. I can tell you that when I left my marriage, um, I also left my children. I actually haven't seen my elder son since 2017. It was a decision that he decided to make based on the fact that he felt that um, the decisions that his father and I made with regard to how we settled our uh, marriage and issues uh, was not up to how he wanted it to happen. And this is quite interesting to note because children, uh, as mothers, we decide that we are going to um, protect our family and we're going to save them from what's actually happening around and that's what I was doing. We face calamities or problems all through our life. How you are able to view that situation is going to determine how you're going to be able to recover from a situation. So I have the option every day to sit around and mope about the fact that my children don't see me, they don't talk to me. But instead of doing that, what I have decided to do is instead of worrying and wondering, and of course I worry about my children, of course I have moments where I cry about it, but I try to help other people. I, through my service to others, help and motivate and encourage other people. And that for me gives me the 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 joy inside that I need for existence. So you really have my messages. You have two options in COVID-19. You can sit and surround yourself with the garbage and the rubbish that's spewing out constantly. And I'm telling you garbage and garbage and rubbish, not because of media. There's a difference. Social media is different and media is different. Media is conveying information that has been shared by the health professionals. That's what they are doing. They're actually doing an excellent job of sh sharing it for the most part. What social media is doing is what um, I would term um, COVIDiots have got over, taken over, because the COVIDiots are posting things mixed with the real stuff, and people who like you and me have to differentiate between all this rubbish and determine what is actual, re actually real, and what's not real. So. The reality of it is that COVID-19 is here. It is a real situation. I have family who are in the front line who are dealing with this. And so I can tell you it is real. The symptoms are real. The victims are real. The situation is real. Countries are suffering because of this. But if you succumb yourself and immerse yourself in that negativity, you're filling yourself with that negativity. What I suggest that you do is find this time, um, uh, the time to really look at yourself find yourself. You can't look at the outside world to determine what your inside world is going to be feeling. You have to first find balance within yourself, find balance in how you're feeling about life in general within yourself. Know what you want as a person, who you are as a person, before you can then approach the outside and allow that outside to then infiltrate to you. I love it. I love it. Great words, great nuggets. Hopefully you guys <clears throat> have your pen and your paper and you're writing down these, these nuggets from Annie Koshy that she is sharing with us. You know, and I, I want to touch on that and I want to park there for a second because in this time, just like in your defining moments, your many defining moments, for many of us, this is just another defining moment. This is a moment <clears throat> where you so eloquently say that you have to learn how to harness your inner energy to find your outward success. And let me break this down to you in, in, a, in another way. You know, when I was growing up, they had these, these snacks that my mom used to bring home that I loved. I just yes. loved. And they, the food. They, were, they were they were Oreo cookies, Annie. Oreo cookies. You know, you got the two black uh, cookies on the outside, but you've got the creamy white filling on the you inside. Take them apart and lick. And you would take them apart and you'd lick. Why? But it, it had. Did you ever think about why you would take them apart and lick the lick the inside? Because the outside was a bit bitter. It was black. <clears throat> Uh, it was like a the dark black chocolate sort of flavor. Um, the mm -hmm. inside was sweet. And mm -hmm. so um, I wasn't much of a fan of Oreo cookies when I was growing up. I was more of a Chips Ahoy chocolate chip fan. Uh -huh. I the mother's, I think, version. There was a soft, chewy version of it. Um, mm -hmm. But tell me, Terrence, why do you take them apart? 
this is the this is here and you're gonna love this just like the, the chocolate chip cookies the same thing with the oreo cookie see we break the oreo cookie apart and we lick the inside because that's where the good stuff is and you 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 annie and every one of you who are watching this broadcast whether you're live or whether you're watching it in the replay think of yourself especially right now as that oreo cookie or that chocolate chip cookie where the outside is fearful about what's going to happen you've got to take this moment and go on the inside yeah. Because on the inside is where the good stuff is. The inside is where the good stuff is that's going to help you get through COVID-19. On the inside is where the good stuff that's going to come out of you as the things that you never knew you could do, but you found out you could do them because you had to be on the inside during COVID-19. There are going to be new millionaires and billionaires born out of this sheltered in place. Yeah. There are going to be new prescriptions to people's headaches that are going to be born out of this sheltered in place on the inside. There are going to be literally new sons and daughters and uh, puppies and kittens and all torp sites, all types of things that are going to be born because we had to be on the inside. That's true. And on that note, you know, Terrence, you have also the negative aspect of that and that Absolutely. is that we're finding ourselves in a situation that's unprecedented where uh, you're finding yourself perhaps um, with someone that you don't want to be with and mm -hmm. you're, you're you know what we as humans do is we tend to run away from situations often we tend to run away from situations that are uncomfortable and so if you find yourself in a relationship whether it be a parent child whether it be with spouses whether it be a partner whether whatever it is and your um your usual modus operandus is to just uh get into the car and go to work go. and, and yeah. leave um and then you occupy your evening time with um responsibilities and you're not really spending time connecting yes. what has happened all of a sudden is covid 19 has put you guys in proximity with each other in which you have to work out some of those challenges yes. And we're going to find two results of COVID-19, people who are going to go through this extended period of self-isolation with each other and determine whether they actually do love each other or whether they can't stand each other, each other. Yes. right? And yes. so it's going to be the small things that you would say, ah, it's all right, I'm not bothered with it. All of a sudden, when it happens 24 hours, seven days a week, um, whether it be just the cap on the on the toothpaste, whether it be the dishes left in the sink, whether it be that um, uh, their way of speaking, the tone of voice, what they do, what they want to do, uh, hogging the TV for what they want to right. watch the TV. These little, little things start to accumulate to the point yes. where it's going to be a breaking point. So my suggestion for many people is to find what you fell in love with each other in the first place. Find why you like each other as family members in the first place. We all have faults. None of us are born on this earth perfect. None of us are going to have every day where we're going to do everything in perfection. But everyone has something redeemable about them. Yes. And if you're able to spend a few minutes to sit down and really think about what it is that you like and love about someone else, then you start to focus on that. And when you start nurturing that, as you mentioned at the beginning, we all have a seed. It's how you nurture that seed. A farmer may plant 10 seeds in a pot. Not all 10 seeds will germinate. Right. Right? Some may not germinate because they cannot germinate. They don't have the uh, DNA, the, in, in, the enough inside of them to germinate. But others, if you watch it, water it, nurture it, it will grow. And then there are little shaky saplings, right? And so you look at the start of a relationship or the start of fixing a broken relationship as that little shaky sapling. You've got to continue to support it and grow it. Yes. For it yes. to become, you know. So 
And these are some of the things that I have found COVID-19 is really going to change not just the landscape of how we live our lives, not just the landscape of how our countries are going to live our lives, but also the values on which we have considered our family life um, and how we treat others in our lives. Um, I think for me as a person, when this is all over, one of the first things that I want to do is to be able to hold and hug my friends and family. Um, the little bit of human touch, the freedom to yes. be able to do that is what I miss the most. Yes, I, I agree. And you, we got to have a Florida Canada hug when all this is <laughs> over. Well, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. And I think going back to the premise by which we started this conversation, uh, in your defining moment, you had to go through what you went through so that you could find out more about who you really were and who you were supposed to be. And I think that is one universal reason why this actually happened at this space and time, because yeah. it's now showing people who they really are and it's pulling other people out of their comfort zone so that they could see who they really were meant to be. And, and, and I hope for the greater good of our world as a whole, that many people find out what their purpose was and start walking in their purpose and that they start preparing now to walk in their purpose so that they no longer, they don't come out of this being voiceless like they went into this. Right. They don't come out of this being jobless like they went into this. That's the other thing. A lot of people are going to find their niche in this time of isolation. Yeah. They're yeah. not going to go back to their nine to five. They're going to open their own brick and mortar, their own online store. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, I, I reckon this to the caterpillar going into the cocoon. Absolutely. And for some, they were already in that cocoon, right? Absolutely. They were already molting and, know. It. and it, uh, COVID-19 has cracked it open and they're emerging from that dormancy stage, right? They're starting to open up their wings. Yes. I say that there is a book in all of us. There is a book waiting to emerge because what is a book? The A book is your voice. Yes right? A, a book is your voice. And so I would encourage, put down your thoughts into onto paper. When you yeah. put down your thoughts onto paper, you're actually giving birth to that thought. Yes. And when you put that down there, you start accumulating those thoughts. And eventually what you're going to find is either you've got the structure for a book, or you've got a poem, poetry book, or you've got um, uh, an affirmation book affirmation book you've got something that is going to be precious so whether it is a a dream journal whether it is a diary that you keep whether it is um uh you dictate your voice and it goes into a, a dictaphone and and it can be transcribed from there whatever way it is that you're doing it i think that there's a book inside all of us that is just waiting to be written and COVID 19 is a great opportunity i think art in any form whether it is uh, through music, whether it is that you find a new hobby, you take the time to learn a new skill, whether it is that you pick up that paintbrush that you haven't touched maybe since high school or university or elementary school, if it's even that far back, and you find it boring <laughs> in some way. But you know, art is not just that. Maybe you find yourself in the kitchen and all of a sudden you've opened that dusty cookbook that you have never actually opened, but it looks great on your shelf. Well, more than a bookend, maybe you should open the pages and take a look at some of those recipes. You know, what I've done always is I look at the recipes and then I go shopping hungry, Terrence, and I have <laughs> and coming home and intending to make it. But then I find I uh, make one thing and I don't use that ingredient. And then I find that I'm left mm -hmm. over a bunch of ingredients and I have to then concoct something completely new. That is art. That yes. is food art, right? That is creativity. And you know, it's it's funny you mentioned that because we've got a crock pot that has been sitting above the uh, the refrigerator for years. Oh, I love crock pots. They're my oh, and, and and the first couple of weeks that we were in isolation, I pulled out that crock pot. I turned on YouTube and I made my first dish in that crock pot, and it was a 
masterpiece, if I should say so myself. <laughs> I don't care what anyone else says. It was a masterpiece. And, and, and it's things like that. You, you, you've you been able to tap into some things that yeah. you didn't know even existed. And as we bring it back to your story, after you had that defining moment, you were able to tap into some things that you didn't even know you existed or that you were actually good at. And now it's morphed into this long list of things that you do as a media personality, as a radio DJ, as as, as a CEO of emerging companies, all because you decided that you no longer wanted to be voiceless and you decided to harness your energy for your outward success. Absolutely agree with you, Terrence, on that. And just on that note, I think the it, it was already there. What I ended up doing is putting it out into the universe. What I ended up doing is taking what was so scared inside me to voice, and I voiced it. I said, this is what I want. And when I said that, the universe heard me. And so what does that mean? It means that I am not religious. I'm spiritual. I believe that there is a higher power. I believe that I'm dictated by that higher power. And I put it out there and I let it guide me. I allowed it to speak to my inner voice where I was hearing um, and believing in my abilities. So whether it was that I wanted to be on screen, whether it was that I had a childhood dream of being a Guinness World Record holder, whether it was that I wanted to be an RJ, and yes, all the steps leading up to these moments were steps that I didn't realize I had to go through to get to that moment. Mm -hmm. I've been shaped and formed and molded and and really forged in a, a forge of fire. My defining moment was a phoenix moment for me. I rose from those ashes, the brokenness of my life, the brokenness of expectation, of um, cultural uh, con 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 for, uh, conformity, of all of these things. It was phoenix rising from the ashes. And so for me, being my badass self right now was not an option. It was the only way that I was going to be able to survive and to be able to grow and bloom and be who I am today. Being successful is in all of our hands. Being successful is in how you think about yourself. So if you feel you're successful inside, you will project that successful. And when you project it, other people will see it and warm towards it. And so I think for me, it was acknowledging that it was acknowledging who I was the strengths that I had and then really highlighting that and that highlight is what people are seeing right now and as I say to most people who have had defining moments like yours and have come out on the other side thank God you don't look like what you've been through <laughs> Thank and, you. and we're going to leave it right there. This is Annie Koshi. She is the award-winning Guinness Book World of Record multimedia <clears throat> personality here on the Unstoppable Story Show with Terrence Leftridge. <clears throat> We've got some comments in the comment section. Janelle Harris, who also is an author of the anthology, the recently released anthology stepping out into our territories from Tampa, Florida. She says, great show. We've got Mama Rosetta West, my mama to many across the country, checking in from Kansas. She says, we encounter many defeats, but we must not be defeated. Okay. Absolutely. And she also says she liked what I said when I said the good stuff is on the inside. Yeah. Absolutely. And so great comments. Thank you guys for checking us out in the chat room. We appreciate you spending time with us. But Annie, I know somebody has watched the show, is going to watch the replay, and they're just going to be mesmerized by your story and all the things you've been able to do with your life. And they're going to want to have a deeper connection with you. They're going to want to see what your what see your movies. They're going to want to read your book. They're going to want to talk about all the things that you're doing currently. So tell us how can they get in contact with you if they want to have a closer relationship with Annie Koshi. Absolutely. So you can find out more information on either of my websites. So first website is www.annieanniejkoshy.com. Um, and uh, that's my main website. My second one with my book and information there is www.find.com 
yourself series.com that's f i n d s e r i e s um sorry f i n d uh y o u um, r s e l f c s e r i e s dot com okay. wow. sorry about that um yeah i know and then i'm on google so just put my name into google a lot of information will come up i'm on facebook uh or the best way is to reach out to terence and he will uh flip uh your uh inquiries across to me so you know terence i'll uh, get a hold of him um if you're re- seeing me on facebook uh just send me a message um i will have been tagged on this my companies will have been tagged um and there's several profiles on facebook that i manage as well that you'll be able to see me on tell them a little bit about the gta network on your screen behind you Ah, GTA South Asia Media Network is my company name and so you can actually look it up uh with that um as you can see on the screen behind me um there is a Facebook page that is called GTA South Asia Media Network and so uh this company is actually promoting people who are in the arts media and entertainment um uh realms within the GTA GTA stands for the greater Toronto area so I'm just outside of Toronto in a suburban city and uh it's not just limited to that i actually work right across uh several um uh platforms and and communities and countries with that same uh brand now what does that mean um it's a company that prom- uh, does work in media consultancy in pr work in hosting i'm a professional photographer and so that work uh really is related to that and uh in addition to that i also am the uh brand and marketing consultation um director for uh an animation company that's based in the US called Pixels and so uh we do uh, whether it's graphic content whether it's animation whether it's vfx um we do logo development graphic content development a lot of this technical stuff that you're seeing um in terms of um uh videos that sort of stuff our company does manage that we also have an academy that's based in india where we teach students uh various things uh from 3d 2d animation um all of those components but also offer an opportunity for women and uh students who are um uh disabled to come and learn media arts which often they would not be given an opportunity to do that so this is continuing education for people who are already um skilled in one area and they want to either enhance their skills or add another skill and this is in hyderabad so uh those are several hats um that gta south asia media network uh wears um but there are several brands that it has under that umbrella as well including an entertainment or a, a component of it called lava lounge uh including the photography component of it called Annie J and then the media consultancy component called Annie J Kushi Media Consultants so it's all under the branch of GTA wow i mean that's a mouthful i know you need to stop and take a drink of water for everything <laughs> that you that you just said so that that is phenomenal i mean and you know what you really exemplify what we would call a phenomenal woman uh from what you've overcome to what you are doing right now it is just it warms my heart to be able to share a little bit of screen time with you and uh, hear your story and and know that you are blessing others uh you. with what you're doing across the globe so we appreciate you hanging out with us here on the unstoppable story show uh being the voice for the voiceless and letting people know that they can harness their inner energies for their own outward success. Uh I want to give you the last word before we end the show. So what what one last nugget would you like to share with our audience? For all of you who are listening right now, for all of you who are feeling disillusioned with where you are in life, where you come and uh your own voice, you're not hearing it. Take a few minutes to listen to what it is that you really want to do. Find the little girl or the little boy inside of you and let that person really really come out. When you do that, you're going to find yourself a lot happier. And when you're finding yourself happier, you're going to find the people around you happier. Don't try to live your life pleasing others. First start with pleasing yourself. And that's the first step to really having the best kind of relationships with others and to really being the unstoppable you that you can really be. 
Oh, I have trained her so well. She got that unstoppable <laughs> in there. Just like, ooh, did I tell y'all that she was just slick like butter? I told you. <laughs> this is Annie Koshi. Uh, check her out on her website, AnnieJKoshi.com. Check her out on GTA, the South Asian Media Network. Check her movies out. Just check, check her out on all social media. This is a phenomenal woman to get to know. And, you know, just a real quick story. It's my show, so I don't care if we go over it. You know what? <laughs> This we we met on social media like I've been meeting a lot of people and I can't wait to take our online relationship offline and I ain't going to share our secrets. Oh my god! I can't tell you about the popcorn ceiling. This but this here, behind the scenes stuff. Now. <laughs> it, we're we're in the after party, the unstoppable short stories after party. But here I want to talk to you guys about being authentic because you know we met online. And, you know, the typical thing online is you start to try to tell people or you try to pull people in to what it is that you're doing. And and I I, I had to pump Annie's brakes. I said, <laughs> I want to get to know you. And when I said I wanted to get to know you, the floodgates of Annie Koshi opened up. And I've learned so much about this woman <laughs> in mere weeks than probably people and, and y'all yeah, must say it because I'm just like that. People that are close to her probably don't know as much as I've learned over the past couple of weeks. And that just shows the evolution. That just shows how Annie is letting the good stuff on the inside come out and permeate the entire universe. So I, I thank you for opening up to me. I thank you for coming into the unstoppable family. And I and I'm and I'm I'm kicking down the door of the Annie J. Koshi family. I'm in there. I'm in there like swimwear. So there's nothing you can do about it. But I appreciate you for being who you are and for sharing your authentic authenticity uh with everybody that you come in contact with. So thank you for that. And thank you for coming on the Unstoppable Stories show. It's an honor, Terrence, um, that first off that uh, we connected and uh, within our first conversation, we hit it off and it was great. Um, you can't be anything but your authentic self, because if you're not, then you're lying to yourself. And so um, it's great to be surrounded by people who are very authentic. And I think that is the highest power that I've been able to reach right now is to be able to be discerning and to be able to find the right one. So thank you so much. This has been an awesome platform to be on. Um, I'm grateful that uh, you saw that there was a, a need and a reason and a, a vision for you to bring me onto your show. So thank you. You're very welcome. And for all of you guys who are out there, if you are in a situation where you are voiceless, then just listen and remember Annie's story and recognize that you can move from your defining moment. You can move into a state of knowing yourself. You can move into a state where you rise from the ashes and have your own Phoenix story and learn how to harness what's on the inside and use it towards your outward success. Uh, I want to remind you guys to hang out with me tomorrow as I do double duty on the Trina Brown Speak Show and on the Coaches Cafe. You can go over to my page and get that information. Uh, but for the Unstoppable Story Show, we thank you for always joining us and always being a part of our show where we talk to ordinary people with unstoppable stories. And in parting, wherever you are, in the world today. No longer do you need to be voiceless. No longer do you need to be stuck in a situation that doesn't help you find out who you are and go live that life and recognize that self-love is the best love. And wherever you are in the world today, don't just make it a great day. Go out and make it an unstoppable day. Take care. unstoppable stories. Now here's your host, life accountability coach, Terrence Leftridge.